Mr. Chair and Senators, Kyle Packham with the California Special Districts Association. My comments will be focused on the consolidation aspects of the bill. And with regard to that, CSDA very much appreciates the goal of the legislation. Um, we want to find solutions to failing water systems, and we want to work constructively with the administration and with the legislature to do that. Unfortunately, this is not the bill. I want to uh, applaud and I just, I very much appreciate the comments of the chair and the vice chair, particularly since this bill just came out an uh, hour or two before the hearing. I think that the aspects of the bill that they touched on were very astute. And I'd actually like to, um, to the chair's point, go through some of these aspects in order to highlight some of our concerns and speak to those issues a little bit further. Um, first of all, as was noted, uh, the consolidation aspect, not at all limited to the drought. Secondly, um, it's not limited to just public agencies. And for those members on the committee that may not be on the water committee or be as familiar, the term public water system that's used in this bill applies to all public and private water systems that have connections of 15 or more or that serve 25 or more people. And actually, many areas of the bill also apply to private residences, single individual residences. So the bill is far more far sweeping than just local agencies, which has been predominantly the conversation. Next, the stated needs for the bill. Um, it, it should be noted that, at least as was communicated to us by the administration, the vast, vast, vast majority of problems and what was listed in a, it was probably a list of about 400 entities uh, with MCL violations had to do with some of these small private systems. Uh, a very small minority were the public agencies. Um, and those private systems are permitted by the State Water Resources Control Board or regulated by the PUC. And so it would strike us that uh, early stage, first low hanging fruit place to start would be addressing the problems that are occurring with regard to that oversight and regulation by the state of California. Um, the state also through health and safety code section 116665 in existing law has the authority to take over those systems through a receivership process. That's in current law that the state can do that. This bill doesn't contemplate trying to address reforming that process, and we think that that's a mistake. And we think that would also be presumably an early place to start. I'll quickly turn to page eight of the bill, which the, the chair pointed out. I think that this is, this is a very important deficiency in the bill, which is likely caused by, as the vice chair mentioned, it being rushed through the process. Uh, on page eight, line nine, where it says consistently fails, we appreciate the fact that the word consistent was placed in there, and we think that that intent is, is, is admirable, and that would be very helpful, especially if there was a definition that comported with the word consistently. Unfortunately, the definition sort of redefines the word consistent. It says a failure. Consistently fails means a failure, and we appreciate that the administration uh, the intent of the bill is not to be a one-time instance. And so what we would ask is that the bill just say that, that the bill be written out that it's not a one-time instance, that it's multiple instances, that it's a, a period of, of instances over a period of months, not days or hours. That's an important issue for us. And so it's particularly the expansive authority that's really very much changing uh, long-term practice, decades that have gone into the cortese knotts hertzberg process. Uh, I would turn to page nine of the bill, and this is where it really gets into where it subverts the local agency formation commission process, which by doing so, it removes the current right of Californians to protest and vote on where they get their water and what local government they are subjected to. So under the LAFCO process, Californians have an opportunity to protest any LAFCO decision and then have a vote on it if it reaches a certain threshold, not unlike Proposition 218 for raising fees. But as you see um, on page 12 of the bill, section three subdivision G, the bill basically, while it's, so while it, on page eight, line 13, it says consult with and fully consider input from the LAFCO, which I don't think that that means that they have to actually listen to them and they just have to ask them. Uh, on page 12, it says it exempts the entire bill from the LAFCO process. So it exempts them from everything that the LAFCO does. And we don't understand how the LAFCO could then implement the bill, but I'm sure my colleague from Cal LAFCO could speak more to that. Um, 
let's see, I'll, I'll wrap it up here, Mr. Chair, because I know I'm giving a lot of comments here, but uh, on, lastly, I, I would go into the uh, financing of the bill. And we very much appreciate, we have districts that, and I think, I think this kind of goes back to the voting aspect too, because we have special districts that are trying to do the right thing, that are trying to voluntarily take on failing water systems and solve some of these problems. And some of those agencies are not getting the support that they're looking for right now under current law. We believe that this, led, that this language that talks about the financial assistance is not a guarantee that when the state mandates this, the state will fund everything associated with the consolidation. We think that the language, particularly the part that subjects it to the existing um, processes of the state water board, that that language opens the door that this doesn't have to apply. And so what that means is that when, when the uh, agency then gets handed this problem and they go on to deal with it, they've got to go through Prop 218, meet the standards of Prop 13, Prop 26, how are they going to get their voters to approve rate increases and new taxes when their voters may have been opposed to the consolidation in the first place? So I think that that's, that basically sums up what I'd like to say here, um, if I can. But I would like to just conclude by saying that, uh, you know, this is a complex endeavor. And we think that it's, it, this way of rushing it through is the wrong way to do it. We want to come to the table. We want to work with you, Mr. Chair, with the legislature, with the administration, and we wanna try and find real fixes of this. We think that rushed fixes could actually cause more problems, create lawsuits, create more costs than, uh, than it will actually solve these problems. Thank you for the time. That was very comprehensive, thank you.